Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. Hope you're doing wonderful. It's Monday and yes, we are back from Las Vegas. Got back about two in the morning or so, uh, th this morning, same Monday. And uh, yeah, just ready to rock out again. Got a beautiful week ahead of us, uh, but I am leaving again for a trip on Friday night of this week. Next week, I'm going to be in Iceland. So I'm going to be in Boston if you're up in the area this weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and some of Monday, and then flying out to Iceland Monday morning. So saying all that to say, I'm traveling again. So the last time I traveled on a plane, uh, we had a little bit of a sell-off, but it was a beautiful by the dip, right? Just a quick boop. Um, and so right now, as we stand on the SPY, I really like these two candles and I'm looking for the trend to slowly and slightly continue. Uh, likely, any kind of position from here on out, I'll consider just getting in and getting out on Friday and uh, we'll see if the Newsom travel indicator goes seven for seven this Friday afternoon or Monday of next week. That's the SPY. Uh, the rest of the broader ETFs, the Qs, you know, bouncing off the 10. Here's the Dow Jones ETF, for example, DIA and the Dow just Again, looks a little bit bullish, kind of bouncing off of the 20. And the IWM uh, got a 144-143 bull put spread expiring this Friday. and got an exit price for that at 145.07. Here's the 100 something moving average on the IWM. That's kind of far away. But at this particular price, if you are a credit spread fan, there's still some premium for late November, early December, somewhere below 142, which this is, in my opinion, a pretty healthy wave rotation on the IWM Russell 2000 ETF. Let's go look at some stocks that you guys requested. First on the list is Netflix. Had a few people ask me about Netflix today. Very good buying opportunity today and or Friday. So my good buddy Dean Chance, AKA the stock chancellor, had a put sale at 180, expired worthless this Friday. Congratulations, Mr. Chance. Niels has one down there at 175 for not this Friday, but next Friday. So Netflix, uh, realistically, this 190 line, this resistance, very easy line to draw. Why? Well, that's just the previous all-time high. That's all we're dealing with. So this is a weekly chart. Here's the daily chart. Uh, you know, previous resistance back here in August, and then of course back here right in September. Uh, so that 190 line, we may or may not have bounced off of a pretty similar price. You know, uh, semi recently. So we came back down, had a nice little high wave candle just on Friday and check out which moving average that's right on top of. We got the 50. So some traders played Netflix like this, bullish above that candle, stop below that candle, and uh, looks good to me. I'm not saying it's going to work for sure, but I am saying that it's definitely out of good support. There's some areas why it should work and you know, lose small, win big. Here's the weekly bouncing off the 10, Netflix doing its thing. NVIDIA, new all-time highs just over on Friday. We did hit my shorter term target, however, at 215. From here, 246, definitely doable, but I think after some type of little bit of a pullback or a retest, uh, if you got a chance to buy on this pullback day on Thursday, congratulations, because it pulled right down to the 20. But at this point, I am expecting something like this again, or a consolidation for a few days and then a continuation higher. Overall, I see Nvidia continuing to go higher throughout the next few months, but uh, pres preferably, personally, I would like to buy it on a pullback. We are at a target right now. Shout outs to my girl, Samaya, uh, who crushed Netflix with like, I think over eight R's or something like that. So she did a phenomenal trade. Got back in, way back in this breakout back in September. Mm, just a lot of traders just milking NVIDIA for every dollar right now. Next on the list is Facebook, ticker symbol FB. My good buddy Ray Rue has a 175 put sale expiring this Friday. Netflix, I'm sorry, not Netflix, Facebook. Looks like a little bit of a pennant pattern. Looks nice. Volume is declining. Bullish gap action. Bullish gap and go. We're trading up. We're pulling back down. We start making some higher highs or higher lows on Facebook. I don't know, like tomorrow or the next day looks good to continue higher. Got another request, here was HYG. This is the iShares High Yield Corporate Bond ETF, hashtag yawn all around. Here's the long-term moving averages, and what is interesting about this particular ETF is you'll see how flat the 200 simple is. If you zoom out, there's a lot of data on this thing. 
And uh, when I said yawn earlier, you can see it just doesn't do very much, but it is at a little bit of a support. So for the gentleman who requested this particular ETF, here's a support resistance that I see at least right about what particular price is this? 86.50 and some change. And that price I'm drawing from this little candlestick, this little candlestick, this guy, this guy, this guy. And we're pretty much right on top of that particular level. So if we zoom back in here on the daily time frame, here's the daily chart. Here's where we're at. We got a little bit of a pennant pattern, three, four days in a row. Uh, so we'll see if HYG trades down to 86.50 and bounces, or if it closes above Friday's high, it is a buy low sell high spot, so it could be a little bit bullish. By the way, um, want to see what being wrong looks like. Um, let me show you. Let me pull up Roku, ticker symbol R-O-K-U. So Roku, as you all know, I was hating on this one, really bearish. Uh, I looked over the financials on earnings, and they really weren't that bad. Um, they weren't phenomenal, but they weren't that bad. This is what a bullish gap and go looks like, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this occurred on Thursday. Very strong bullish gap. And on Twitter and in our uh, in our Slack application, our real life trading community, I mentioned, guys, this is a very, very strong bullish gap and go. I was trapped, right, because I've been talking about having some puts over earnings on Roku. Um, just, you know, one R of risk, of course, right? Just a loose, small, win big. But very, very strong. I mean, just everybody trapped. If I mean, oh, my goodness. What an easy, classic gap on Roku, just so strong. So we had three days of continuation from just, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand why this gap is not bullish, please email me. I'll be happy to explain it because this is not the last time you will see a gap like this in the stock market. In fact, it'll probably be some tomorrow. You've got to know how to day trade and or swing trade gaps like this because this trade was brutally successful for a lot of people. Just tons and tons of shorts triggered. So bottom line, here's the hourly chart. Um, hourly chart, look to buy the dip, turn on those exponential moving averages if, they, if that can help, and maybe we'll pull back down to the 10 or 20 over the next two or three days and uh, buy the dip on Roku. Looks real strong. Colgate, which is a very solid blue chip, buy low, sell high, dividend paying stock, trading pretty sideways. But what's interesting about Colgate Palm Olive is you got some support resistance about here at 70.21. Here's the daily chart. And on earnings, it came down to this price and completed a nice little double bottom right about there. You got a white candle gapping up. So let me delete that. Here's the white candle gapping up on Colgate, which means it is a retest gap, right? Pulled back and then it retested. Now we're bouncing. So we're making higher highs and higher lows. Um, shorter term, sure. You could look to play a pullback on Colgate. Here's maybe an hourly time frame for that. Here's your hourly charts and you can kind of see... Uh, that pullback that occurred on Colgate. It's a longer term, kind of a boring sideways type of stock. Every now and then it might go a little bit higher, but that's just my analysis on Colgate. I think some higher highs are in the future, but longer term uh, looks bullish. And last but not least, looking at this one from my girl, Marsha Toberman, Walmart today, getting up to 91.98, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is a new all-time high on Walmart. Coming into the Christmas, Thanksgiving, holiday season, at least here in the United States of America. A lot of other holidays, a lot of other seasons coming up. It's merchandise slash capitalism 101. Buy everything. Stores are going crazy. And Walmart is, uh, it's been around. It's been around. So new all-time highs on Walmart. This one probably hits $100 in the next three to four months. You got a very good bullish retest gap right here, right? White candle gapping up. Here's retest number one. Here's retest number two. And then of course, if we get retest number three, um, you know, buy that dip. Trend looks good. Earnings is around the corner. Interesting to see what happens on earnings. So if Walmart gaps down, in my opinion, and opens above 86, I think the trend will continue, uh, especially if it's a small gap and does something like this, that could be a nice little move. And we could see Walmart getting into the triple digits um, again here in the next few months. So just interesting to think about for those who have some shares of Walmart. Ladies and gents, thanks so much for tuning in to your free Monday Real Life Stock Review. Uh, I got a whole other hour of this content coming up for those who subscribe to the afternoon trading room in about 52 minutes. That's when we start there. And uh, yeah, for those who uh, are on the YouTube channel, thanks for being subscribers. You're amazing. And I'll see you all on Wednesday. Until then, remember, love life, love life, and trade it. Bye.